Hey everyone, this is Sean Berrigan, and today I'm presenting the work of Pedro Linares for my Art History 2 class by Professor Elisa Schriedman at Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Pedro Linares, aka Don Pedro, was born in Mexico City on June 29, 1906, and was a renowned Mexican artist famous for his paper mache figures. He began his career as an artist under his father at the age of 15 in 1919. Over his life, Pedro Linares contributed a vast amount of artwork to Mexican culture and trained his family to follow in his footsteps as an artist. His family became the most popular paper mache artist in Mexico. Pedro Linares uh, died from multiple health complications in Mexico on January 26, 1992, at the age of 85. Don Pedro was mainly known for three major works, but he did do a lot more. He was mainly known for his paper mache work, also known as fiesta props. Um, artists who make art out of paper mache in Mexico are called cartunerias. He sold most of his work out of Sonora Market in Mexico City at Tiangues, or open air markets. He is mainly known for his alebrijes, which he invented, his judices, which were Catholic tradition in Mexico, and calaveras, or skeleton figures for Diaz de los Muertos of the Mexican Day of the Dead. He and his family also made piñatas, masks, cactuses, jack-o'-lanterns, and cascarones, which are hollowed out eggshells filled with perfume that festival goers would pelt each other and unsuspecting passers-by. As you can see from the three I have presented on the left here, you have the alebrijes, um, in the middle you have the calaveras, and on the right you have the judases. All right, so fiestas. Fiestas are a way of life in Mexico. Sociologists believe that this is because of the crushing weight of poverty and hard times in Mexican society that drives so many Mexicans to have a hunger to celebrate, to make the most out of the little freedom that they get. Don Pedro made it his job to cater to many festivals in Mexico by providing people the necessary props. He made masks for Mardi Gras, Roman costumes, and Judases for Holy Week, patron saint days in which every town in Mexico has a patron saint and a day to celebrate them, Independence Day commemorating Hidalgo's Grito or Cry for Freedom speech, that started the Mexican Revolution on September 16, 1810. And during that festival, he made giant paper mache castillos or castles. He also provided the calaveras for Dias de los Muertos, piñatas for Christmas, as well as figures for the Posada, which is a recreation of Mary and Joseph's search for lodging in Catholicism. Pedro Linares and his family were tied to the fiesta culture in Mexico and had a prop for every party. Alebrijes. Don Pedro was most famous for his invention of alebrijes, paper mache figures of fantasy creatures that were brightly colored and decorated chimeras and monsters inspired by a fever dream. Chimeras meaning like a combination of other animals. In the 1950s, Don Pedro was struck by a high fever where he says, I think I died, and had crossed over to the spirit realm where he saw these colorful and monstrous creatures. Reportedly, they were shouting, Alebrije, Alebrije, at him on his trip. He says he was revived, and when he returned to life, was inspired by his visions of these creatures and began to create his versions of them. When there wasn't much work in between fiestas, his sales of Alebrije helped keep his family financially afloat. The word Alebrije appears to be an original creation of the Linares family, they claim they use the word alebrijar, which means to decorate, and linguists speculate that that derives from the word labrar, which means to carve something out of something. Alebrije started out a bit more humanoid, like the one you see on the left here, and then over time, their style evolved into the much more um, colorful and dynamic Alebrije we see on the right here. Linares is also famous for his calaveras, which are skeleton figures we see here. This was to celebrate Dias de los Muertos, which was a time where the barrier between the spirit world and this world is so thin that loved ones that uh, have died can cross over 
and spend the day with their family. This festival highlights the Mexican attitude towards death as a humorous treatment of the final judgment. Colorful and cheerful celebrations that stand in stark contrast to the Western world's more fearful and somber attitude towards death. Mexicans believe that we only die to be born anew and death is not seen as something to fear. They even have a funny tradition where they'll mock someone who has upset or disappointed them by reciting poetry acting as if the person was already dead. Don Pedro made many figures of masks for these festivals and even in between them in reference to the tradition. And you see on the left here, card players by uh, Pedro in 1989 and taco vendor by Pedro in 1990. Now, Judases are another favorite of Don Pedro. They're a Catholic tradition in Mexico. They are massive paper mache figures that symbolize Judas from the Bible and are destroyed and burned in effigy to show condemnation of betrayal, treachery, greed, and to support the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They are often sold with fireworks attached to them to light them on fire. They are often generic figures and can take the form of popular cultural icons and political figures. Famously, the Linares did one of Ronald Reagan in 1986, which we can see on the left here. And showing him with, you know, Ron Regal's the devil with devil horns and everything. That's because of the Iran-Contra scandal and they're showing their condemnation of his actions. The other one is of Saddam Hussein in 1991. I wasn't able to get a picture of that one. But that is due to the transient nature. And unfortunately because of that, uh, you know, being lit on fire, not many of uh, Don Pedro's uh, Judases have survived long enough to be photographed. I'm going to tell you guys a little more about the Linares family, particularly the men. The original last name of the Linares was actually Chocolpa, but Pedro's great-great-great-great-grandpa, Don Antonio Linares, changed it after being falsely accused for stealing silverware. He was sent to prison in the town Linares, and people referred to him as the man from Linares until the name eventually stuck and became his legal last name. Pedro Linares did not work alone. Uh, his artistry was very much a family enterprise, and they worked as a unit on most projects. His legacy is carried on by his sons, Enrique in the middle there, Felipe on the right, and Miguel on the left as well as his grandsons, which are not pictured here, Leonardo, Ricardo, and David. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the women of the Linares family. The family worked out of a workshop housing in Sonora Market that was bought by Pedro's mother. Uh, although rarely credited in the artwork, the women of Linares family contributed heavily to the craft, taking care of all the household chores and feeding and clothing the Linares men. They even helped by being gophers, and doing all the base layer mache and undercoats of paint. The artists considered the masculine domain and the men did all the details. All the sons and grandsons continued to make art, but Pedro's daughter and all his granddaughters chose other fields and the eventual success of the family's art allowed them to finance independent careers for all the women in the family. And you can see here, Paula L Linares, she was the one who made the jack-o'-lanterns, which uh, that was like her own independent uh, business in their workshop. All right, so this is the Linares family tree. And the reason why I'm talking about his family so much is because Pedro Linares actually died while um, they were in the process of writing a book about his life. Showing his family here, um, it's just a good idea. But like all these people were living in the shop at the time, you know, um, and working together on projects. Uh, so it was a very big uh, enterprise, you know, and uh, very much a family affair. So moving forward, I'm going to show you a little bit of their work process here. And so you can see in their workshop, the grandson Leonardo and him working in the shop and all these paper mache figures um, against the wall, just constant projects for every festival. On the upper left, you see these creepy dolls. They use those as... Um, like a base layer for the paper mache sometimes to model figures. For the larger figures, they made these huge frames that you see on the bottom left. And here's some more work. I see at the top here, we have uh, a small Judas and several Calaveras. Um, and then you see Enrique there at the bottom left with uh, one of his daughters. 
um, working on some calaveras that was at their rural home uh, that Enrique and his part of the family own. Um, and then you can see another one of Leonardo here uh, painting an alebrije. And then one of the very unique traditions uh, and economical traditions was the Linares made paintbrushes out of cat hair. And so in the documentary, it showed this cat hair mochi and one of the grandson trimming the cat hair and making paintbrushes out of it. This is one of the famous works of uh, Pedro Linares that was featured in a museum. It's called Panteón de Diablito Rojo. It is based on an illustration from Jose Guadalupe Posada that was showing police and other corrupt figures being punished by a devil. Another major work from Pedro Linares was the his reenactment of the uh, Michoacan earthquake that hit Mexico City in September 19, 1985. And this this was a very big earthquake that killed over 10,000 people. And it shows the various kind of things that were going on at the time. Bodies being carried, many doctors, people rescuing other people or uncovering their bodies. Um, this is actually not a convict, but a, a rescue worker in the uh, orange jumpsuit see this man here looting and uh, this woman is just going about her day and of course you have the soldiers because of the fall of order around this chaotic time and then here is another major piece that was featured uh, an entryway this is uh, mariachis at disney's epcot center in uh, florida in 1987 i don't know if they're still there but uh th yeah this was another big international thing for uh, Don Pedro. And him and his family, their work has been known um, as a symbol of Mexicaness. And they aim to, to, to do that in, in all of their pieces. You know, you have the, your traditional stuff like you saw earlier with the taco truck vendor and the card players and the calaveras and all that. So starting here is from Leonardo and it's a Jaguar mask made in 1989 on the left here. And that was a very traditional Aztec iconography. Um, the Jaguar warrior is a very ancient tradition in Mesoamerican culture. And this mask was often worn for festivals. It's like a helmet mask. Then the eagle there is the Tenochtitlan eagle. Basically, it's an ancient Mexica legend that was told to them by one of their gods that they would build their civilization where they found an eagle perched on a, a cactus growing from a stone and it was uh, eating a snake. And so Tenochtitlan itself actually means the cactus that uh, grows from the stone in Nahuatl. On the right here we have Moctezuma was the last Aztec ruler and they're sh showing their connection to the Aztec culture with this kind of figure. Pedro Linares in today's culture, his legacy, is the Alebrijes, and that was shown in uh, Disney's Coco with the character Pepita, which was like the mix of a ram, uh, a bird, and a jaguar. A very popular character in the new Disney movie, and there were some other ones too, but that's the legacy that we see today. And that's the story of Pedro Linares. I hope you like it. And on the far left, you can see here, I wanted to include this because this is Pedro Linares walking through the marketplace uh, drinking pulque, which was his favorite drink. And pulque is the fermented sap of the agave plant. And since he enjoyed it so much, I think it would be uh, good to end on that note. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the life of uh, Pedro Linares and how it's relevant today. Thank you all. Goodbye.